Welcome back to our show, Human Humane Architecture, here in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, on another wonderful early uh, Tuesday evening in for sure climatically paradisal uh, Hawaii. So uh, this, this show today, um, about um, a year ago, someone challenged me who I'm hopeful to have on the show in two weeks. That's Kurt Sandburn, who is almost um, investigative journalist. And he charged me with a tough question, what the best piece of architecture is on our islands in Hawaii. And since my mindset is the same as of the show, which is of no surprise to you probably, that our natural environment is so stunningly beautiful here in Hawaii that our built environment should better be up to that. But my provocative uh, pitch on that, that it might not be quiet yet. So I had a little bit of a hard time and I, I found something that um, hopefully we can get that on the show as well. But then I was back in Germany and I stumbled upon a pretty wild thing that came out of the woods <laughs> all of a sudden for me. And that's Nathan, and not to forget to mention your wife and partner in life and in business, wonderful Tiffany Toothman's child. Mm -hmm. And his or her name is Elevate, and the show is called Elevating uh, Social Engineering for certain reasons I'm going to get to. And Zuri, if you don't mind uh, showing the, last, the first three pictures to us, and that refers to a show that you've been on about a year ago uh, with my colleague Chris Leatham. And, and so we don't want to talk about that because the audience please goes back and watching that. But maybe in a nutshell, what in the world is Elevate? And then we're going to soon dive into what has happened ever since. So first of all, thank you very much for being here. Again. Thanks, Martin. Thank, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, nature or, um, elevates a nature-inspired structure. And so the concept of it is, is really fairly simple in concept, and that's a tree. Um, and how do you bring the functionality, the space um, characteristics of a tree into a useful structure, and one that benefits um, humanity in general uh, across a number of uh, applications. But it's, it's a relatively s simple concept, really. Um, and uh, I don't know why it hasn't been done. Um, maybe we'll find out. <laughs> but that's the, that's the concept, is just a, a tree. And then take that and do the iterations and look at the benefits of it and um, go from there. So mm -hmm. relatively simple concept. And the ones who know me, I'm very uh, sort of cautious when it comes to postmodern approaches where it's about literal symbolism or analogy. So when you're talking about a tree, uh, you don't necessarily mean uh, literally a tree. And another thing I want to talk about is that uh, amongst the many working titles we had for this show here, one of them was Walk the Talk. Because Jay basically charged me and said, Martin, you know, he's been doing this here for a while. and." Um, it's going well, but we get out of the room and we go back into our daily grind and hardly ever or not enough things actually happen. So you, uh, another thing that's stunning that provocatively from an architect, an architectural professor, I choose a piece of architecture which is conceived and basically given birth by who is not an architect. You're actually an engineer, you're a civil engineer, you're a nuclear and naval engineer, and created one of the, what I consider the best pieces of architecture on the islands. Why is that, Nathan? Um, well, maybe because I didn't, I didn't have any formal training that I would try something so crazy. <laughs> uh, that's, that's part of it, but um, I always loved architecture. I mean, I wanted to go into architecture um, in college, and because of scholarship things at the time, I ended up going engineering route. And so mm -hmm. my, my passion has been for a long time spaces and buildings, and that's what I, growing up, would draw. Always either drawing um, jets because I wanted to, to fly in the Navy, um, or houses. And so it's been something that's been in me. My, my grandpa used to build this little cabin out in the woods, and my other grandpa kind of tinkered and made things. So it's just this creativity. Um, Thing that was just kind of born in and just can't um, mm -hmm. separate myself from. And so this was kind of something that I've been thought about for a while, and then it just came time, you know, um, to try it. Mm -hmm. You know, th you know mm -hmm. researched it, thought about it for many years, um, and then it was just a matter of, well, well, let's try it. You know, and the best way to showcase something like this yeah. is to actually build it, and it's not 
like building a skyscraper, so it's not um, super expensive. But uh -huh. um, just try it, see what happens. And, and Zuri has kindly showed it the way we would like to be shown, which is from inside out. So the very first picture was basically showing how it feels. There it is again. Thank you, Zuri. This is how it feels. It's really about feeling good in the tropics. And I have to say, I mean, you. The more we got to know each other after I reached you out, the more I'm impressed because this isn't any kind of little game you're playing. This isn't like a little hobby on the side. You actually, I don't know to what degree you want us to talk about that, but you put all your bag, uh, eggs into this basket here of the Elevate basket. Sure. Uh, and basically you believe basically this is, this is it. You basically had uh, a couple of people from your personal environment to become investors and basically say let's let's just do it and and so the the prototype that Zuri showed is in in Kailua and the quarry so it's in a very sort of unusual situation and just before the show we said maybe next time you know you should basically uh, cover people's eyes and walk them up into the space feel it from inside out first and then go outside and see it basically as the artifact it basically is yeah it's um I've never thought about it that way before we talked about that earlier. But um, when you're inside of it, uh, you almost feel like you're being hugged by nature because it's mm -hmm. surrounding. And, and the space, I think, feels bigger because there's four walls of air essentially around you. And you just get this sense that, that you are on a small pedestal, at least when you've already seen the structure. It'd be interesting if you hadn't seen it and come into it. But just, mm -hmm. just the fact that you're lightly touching the earth, you kind of get a sense of that, especially if you're on the rooftop space as well. Um, and so. It, it, when you're up there, you feel isolated from the world, and you know sometimes you want to be connected to what's going on below, and sometimes you want to be isolated from what's going on mm -hmm. below. And so mm -hmm. I think there's great potential for that, um, you know, the isolation part as it fits into other things. And then mm -hmm. there's a security aspect to it. You know, you're mm -hmm. just it's harder to get up into. Uh, there's various access w ways, but in, in general, it's it's a it's you feel more secure. So mm -hmm. in some cases, you want that, and some you know places don't have that sense of security. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it's a different feel. It's something really you need to experience to be in as well. And uh, we think that once more people can experience it, then the concept will be easier to explain when mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. go in it and, you know, how did you feel? And, um, but in, in general, the response is when people come up into it, they, it feels bigger than the space that they thought it mm -hmm. was. So it's just a 250 square foot, foot space now. Mm -hmm. And you can do as many of them as you want to get larger mm -hmm. areas. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has a good feel. And if, if there, if you don't mind walking us through the other pictures that we have, and we basically organize them in a way that we agree, we, certain things we don't want to talk about because this is how it might be misunderstood. So first of all, we haven't called it a house yet. We haven't called it a home yet. And, and secondly, uh, we pretty much um, also uh, are not talking about the accessory dwelling unit because that was sort of maybe one of the initiations or the easiest for people to um, to understand what it could be for. And I still have to actually uh, protect it and saying, you know, actually for that, it would be the one of the best I can think of because you have, you waste the least amount of garden space you have in your backyard. Yeah. You end up with a great shaded canopy, so you feel good. And above that, you can do whatever you want to do. So yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking, but I understand that it sort of became, almost became a trap that um, you realize it would basically pigeonhole it to, you share it with me, the tiny houses which people know from TV yeah. kind of segment, right? Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, and you know, it was conceived more as, as a off-the-grid micro home or just home that was could do multiple ones, and then the ADU thing came out, okay, that makes sense, but really, you know, it's, we think solutions that have um, addressed city issues and overcrowding issues and effects of urbanism with you know everyone kind of congregating in the cities and the projections for that growth is really high so we want something that has the most impact and ADUs could be one of those it's just um, a matter of timing and the right fit and mm -hmm. um, but the mm -hmm. concept there is that you have a less take up less yard space and you, you almost match the look of the yard instead of matching the look of the house so it's mm -hmm. kind of a mm -hmm. different shift so mm -hmm. there, therefore it's kind of different and not instantly accepted. So the picture who is seeing in the back, I, I would characterize this as really sort of homegrown. And in introduction, we say it's like a, you know, there's a term grassroots, and I would say there's like a the tree roots kind of thing going up here. And it's certainly, you know, homegrown Hawaii because you both live here and you have a wonderful family here and 
your son is very creative. I got the chance to meet him and his dinosaur expertise. <laughs> so there is this sort of being rooted here and believing Hawaii is a place you both choose. And so this is where you saw this, you know, making sense and coming out of certain necessities. But as the best things that have happened in Hawaii, it's not exclusive to Hawaii. You know, it basically can go out and about into the world and, you know, be, you know, of help and meaning there too. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, um, the concept is to go um, far and wide and to make a, a something that makes an impact um, well beyond Hawaii. And, and it was inspired here, and maybe it, it wouldn't have been inspired in some other areas. And I think also Hawaii is small enough that you might get the confidence to try something big because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, it's, it's smaller, you know, it seems mm -hmm. doable. Mm -hmm. If you're in California, it might seem like too big mm -hmm. of a thing to mm -hmm. take on. So, so it's, I don't know how that would have progressed other areas, but I mean, Hawaii is a naturally beautiful area. This was inspired on the North Shore at a remote site to, you know, mm -hmm. try to fit in what could go in this place and meet the, the needs of that area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the reach is intended to be uh, global. Because um, it's, well, I mean, trees are global, so yeah. the, the reach is global. And on the other hand, to also be critical in the show, that's the format of the show, it's like, although it's from here, and I think that happens also a lot to people and other products from here, they first have to actually gain recognition outside. So there's a saying, the, the prophet doesn't count as much in his or her own front yard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it has to go away to earn its credits there and basically come back. You basically uh, have been in San Francisco quite a bit recently because of um, you know many people you talk to of different kinds. Uh, one of a friend of ours is Chris Ford. Hi, Chris. And Chris is part of an organization. It's called Regen. And probably the ones you see in the background that you, uh, Zuri has chosen is probably the, could be the most sort of of that kind that you create some more sort of rural communities, new communities, new farm towns, or something like that. But while we progress through the images, and Zuri, if you could move on, we actually uh, sort of progress into more urban areas, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe you can talk about why that is, why you see, if not the biggest potential of, of Elevate being in the urban realm. Um, well, with the urban realm, one of the, the biggest opportunities as we see is, is parking lots. And um, that's a, a big waste of space, about one third of the footprint of most cities that um, just contributes to stormwater runoff and um, it, it doesn't have any positive redeeming qualities. So that's a huge opportunity within an urban context. A lot, and there's lots of other nooks and crannies with, within cities. And so it, it's, it's just urban infill, really, mm -hmm. and that's one of the mm -hmm. things that to make cities support more people is that we need to you know, do more infill. And so this is a concept of infill that hasn't really been considered um, in this, this way before. So that's, that's the main thing for cities is that's where people are moving towards, you know, I think in 2050 there'll be 2 billion more people, but there's going to be 3 billion more in cities. So mm -hmm. that's what the movement is towards cities. So we need s solutions that address that reality. People aren't wanting to mm -hmm. live in the, there'll still be people living in the country, of course. Um, and there's great fits for that. But we want to go to where the main problem is and mm -hmm. how to address that and, and work on important problems. So we gotta, if we have a good team working on important problems, we'll eventually find um, the right um, fit. That's super exciting. Hold that thought, please, because we're going to go into a short break to then be back with Nathan Toothman and his uh, elevating social engineering topping of today. Welcome to thinkcathawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi. I'm the host for the weekly Thursday 11 o'clock show called Asian Review. See you next month. Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I am Ina Chang. I am the guest host for Small Business Hawaii with Raj Baker. Tune in every Thursday at 2 p.m. and watch us. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Hello, I'm Patrick Bratton. I'm the host of Global Connections. I'm also a professor at Hawaii Pacific University, and my show and some of the other things that we do is shows off the collaboration that we have between Think Tech Hawaii and Hawaii Pacific University. So I look forward to seeing you and talking with you about a lot of issues dealing with Hawaii, the United States, and the world. Thank you very much.
Welcome back to Humane Architecture with today's guest Nathan Toothman talking about elevating social engineering. And you know, you, your project is pretty much a great case study for the show which talks about the humane aspect. You want to elaborate on that a little bit? The humane aspect? Yes. Um, What's so human slash humane about the project? Um, well, part of it is it's it's on a small scale, maybe. So if a few people, I think, relate more to smaller scale buildings. Um, it's intended to help more the small guy than the big corporation. So mm -hmm. there's that aspect. Um, you know, the na nature part, people identify with nature. Um, and, and, you know, you think about there's lots of shows and, and or, um, shows and songs about, you know, the tree houses of your youth, you know, mm -hmm. and, and relating mm -hmm. back to that. So it's mm -hmm. very much that is that people either played in a tree house or knew somebody had a tree house or wanted a tree house. And so it, it kind of taps into that, like a simple sort of um, understanding of it, like, mm -hmm. I guess is humane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, when it comes to, that's why we avoid to say a house or that comes with a mortgage becomes with all this pressure. And so here, this is sort of really affordable. This is really doable. I don't know if you want to talk about the cost because you had prices for the prototype. And as I know very well, uh, if you design systems and serial types, you know, the more you mass produce, the more the price could basically come down. And, but, it's, but it's really sort of doable because you don't need to, uh, you know, do this kind of heavy lifting. Yeah. And and at the same time, um, it's not set in stone like usually. You know, either you have a custom home and speaking as an architect, right, which architects fee and all this stuff, or you have something from the builders, from the gentry or the Armstrongs, and you can basically you know order from a catalog, and you can have either or, and you can try to customize it. But as I understand, what I find really uh, amazing about about Elevate is that it is. It's a thought more, it's a concept more, that depending on who wants it, can basically transform it to their kind of needs. And so it reminds me with the analogy to a tree. A tree is obviously a global uh, system, right? There are trees everywhere in the world, but there are thousands or even, I'm not a botanist, so I don't know exactly, so you guys forgive me for that, but there are thousands or even 10,000s of different species of trees, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it um, can be very adaptable to the, the person, even to the standpoint of each foundation for it is separate, and really each structure is separate. They can touch, uh, and you can connect them together. Mm -hmm. But it actually allows for like houses to expand and contract as you might need. You know, So when your family grows and fam family shrinks, it, it can allow some flexibility that's just not there with mm -hmm. a, a normal house. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it is modular, so each one's basically the, the same, and we do a lot of them so we get the cost down. But we're really trying to get also bring in technology to that to look at options like 3D printing of components, um, trying to take more of the labor cost out of it, looking at other industries, how you know car manufacturing stuff, how they've done ways to get the cost down. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's you know a lot of advancements in a lot of areas, uh, cars advancing you know crazy fast. Um, Rocket ships, um, phones, and but but houses aren't really advancing t too much beyond what we've already known known about. Mm -hmm. And so the one of the goals there is to try to take a new approach at, at it, a new thinking, a more um, infused technology into that. And that's one of the areas where the Bay Area has helped that we've been taking the trips to because that's mm -hmm. that's kind of how they think and mm -hmm. think outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a big component of it. We we want it to be at the end really affordable. We want it to be flexible, and we want it to maybe adapt to a different. Um, philosophy that people might have for housing. You know, mm -hmm. there's a, adapt a different value system for what you what you expect out of your house, how long you expect it to last, how much time you expect to be in there, um, and, and it, it, it varies as you know you, you go through different life changes. You can't fit a family of four in the, that small of a house, um, mm -hmm. but it can expand and contract. And so it's just trying to rethink um, essentially everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe you talk about some sort of case studies more in. in specific or explicitly, um, and I think this was before the, or after the last show, one of the things that sort of made it very clear to me how creative the thing could basically be a parasite, that's another term maybe from the plant life. You were pointing out to a parking lot at Kailua Shopping Center where uh, Starbucks or McDonald's, I forgot which one, had basically taken over a little piece of the 
the parking lot in a very invasive way, yeah. stealing many of the very profitable stalls. Whereas Elevate could come in and basically kill several birds with one stall. And you want to talk about that? Yeah, that, that was the example of the Kahala Mall drive through for Starbucks example of, um, I think the total square foot was around 1,200 square feet by the time you add up the, the landscaping and all this area. And parking's already, you know, really terrible there on the weekends. So the idea was is really to be more space efficient. So you only have 40 square feet on the ground for 250 feet above. So you're just, you're just trying to tap into that ver vertical space with less impact below, but do it, and the key is to do it in an aesthetically pleasing manner. So something that's mm -hmm. acceptable, something that fits in. Um, so it's, it's functionality, but also uh, beautification at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, you know, it's, you get a good, three layers of usage, you know, below, you know, it's shaded, it's like being under a tree, it's a good environment, the inside has its good environment that we talked about, and then potentially some applications using the rooftop as well. So it's just stacking more layers of efficiency in um, smaller areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's a good case study for it. And um, I like the term parasiting for so, some applications. Yeah, parasiting paradise, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes me come back to something you said about um, uh, songs, right, and trees. So there's one song that's uh, Pink Paradise put up a parking lot, yeah, right, yeah. that we know by Joni Mitchell yeah. originally and then been uh, sort of you know, reinterpreted by many others. That song is, is critical and that sort of reminds me of my, when, when we say, you know, it was homegrown here, it went out into the world and it eventually comes back. I'm going to share with you my most favorite application for homecoming which is basically Kalakaua, which if we allow ourselves to call Kalakaua our strip, uh, you would take out the individual traffic and replace it with more sophisticated systems, and then you basically populate it with trees, with elevated trees. Yeah. How yeah. do you like that? I idea? love it. Let's, um, let's do that. Uh, and we, we, when we were in San Francisco recently, um, I was talking to a planner for San Francisco, the city, and, and all of Market Street, it's a really large, major stretch. Mm -hmm. They just want, they're going to redo the whole thing because mm -hmm. they have the money to. And it's going to be done over time in the future. And, and so it's less focus on you know, cars and, and less focus on the, the transportation. It's, they're still in there, but it's more bike friendly. It's more walker, walkable. But it's also like they're trying to bring things that people want to congregate around, the community gets mm -hmm. to and enjoys. Mm -hmm. And so we see a big opportunity for that. Is it's, it's something that people want to come. They want to look at it. They want to frequent the small business down below it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a place-making community, so mm -hmm. a little bit of a focus mm -hmm. more on the pedestrians. And I'm saying uh, Kalakaua because Jay asked me to do a, a show about the old slash new international marketplace. And so Elevate as being the sort of um, guerrilla would be another term I would like, comes and brings back to what international marketplace basically had, which were the little vendors, the little people who didn't have a lot of investment, who couldn't pay these humongous, uh, outrageous rents there. They could come back and populate the streets, right? Yeah, yeah you, you might you'd end up with a lot smaller space than maybe you had before, but mm -hmm. maybe that's the trend that we're all experiencing, especially, mm -hmm. you know, in Hawaii, we all live in smaller spaces, mm -hmm. and um, we just can't really maybe expect what we had in the past. Um, so that, that's, that's one option that, that might not be there in another way is, is you get a, a micro space, mm -hmm. but at least you have a space. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's one of the concepts for it. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys we know because we talked about him and hopefully get him on the show who's Jeff, uh, who basically we call uh, the home full. I call him the home full because he has a home. The home is Waikiki. All he's needing is a roof above his head. And he's very creative as being a little vendor. He makes lays and he crafts stuff. So he could basically, you know, open, work out of the trunk and have a lid open and, you know, congregate the area around him. And whenever he's not at work, he basically uh, is upstairs, right? Yeah. And, and, and so you bring back what, what Waikiki, Hawaii was about, which is the gritty and the small grain and the little people, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and your, 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 your Elevate could be a vehicle, right? Could enable the people to do that again, which yeah. is yeah, it, visionary. Yeah, kind of uh, provide something that wasn't there before. And in some cases, it wouldn't be a mass scale application, but it's helping some, some people. And mm -hmm. then maybe it, it grows through that. Um, 
so yeah, there's, I think there's lots of opportunities for that infill of small ideas, and, mm -hmm. but, but really impactful for those people that are affected by it. And the, the illustration also shows, we wanted to mention uh, Ju Young Park, who is, has become your collaborator, and I'm blessed and honored yeah, to have him as a DRC student as well. Yeah, he's done all, all these images, and um, I, um, I give him a concept, and then he takes it and makes it mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we don't communicate exactly what I said was right, but then it turns out better than what I had yeah. w w what I would have tried to communicate to, to and that. And I think, let that zero bring this one here up because this one shows a vertical orientation. So my favorite uh, sort of enclosure application would be having these vertical retractable louvers. They're planted on one side and displays on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's like a giant jalousy, but turned sideways and then mm -hmm. you can rotate it. Um, mm -hmm. So you could, you could bring the greenery inside and that's one of the things I didn't realize doing that, that my outside didn't match my inside too much. And so mm -hmm. um, it was pointed out you really need to bring make consistency. That's my complete lack of architecture training. <laughs> Don't worry uh, about it. I think it's great. Our exchange of has always been there is the engineer thinking architecturally and there is the architect trying to think engineering-wise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're towards the end of the show. We can talk for much longer, and we will, because there's a tradition already to have you back to, to update us on the development of, of Elevate. So thank you very much. Hey, thank all you. the best to uh, all the team and Tiffany and your kids. Yeah, so, really appreciate your passion and, for it. And thank you for doing this for us in Hawaii. Of course. Thank you very much, Nathan. So I hope you enjoyed uh, Humane Architecture again. And if so, please visit us again. We're always on, on Tuesday early afternoons, 5 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Bye-bye. everybody. I'm I.C. Davidson. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. One of the things that we try to do here is promote civic engagement. How do we do that? We put on shows weekdays from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, we let people in, in our world on Facebook and all the social media. Today I'd like to talk to you about another way that you can engage us here at Think Tech Hawaii and help us promote civic engagement here in Hawaii. Um, what you do is you get on Twitter, you follow us at Think Tech HI, and during the day, between weekday, weekdays, between 12 and 5 p.m., you can interact with each of our live shows. What does that mean? You can send us questions, comments, thoughts, experiences, anything. All you have to do is mention us on Twitter. We'll see it here in the studio, and our hosts and guests will address them accordingly. This is a, a big thing for us. We want to hear from you. The conversation doesn't start here when our show ends. It ends when everybody gets their say. Join us weekdays, 12 to 5 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. Join in the conversations live with Twitter, at ThinkTechHI. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your support. See you soon.